Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we have got some housekeeping announcement from 1.30 for the 25th International and the 10th Asia Safe Community Conference. And um, we will, from now on, we will have the the talk concert with citizens. So for the smooth operation of the session, please um, the switch your phone to the silent mode. So make sure that your phone is on a silent mode. For this session, uh, this session will be uh, very interesting and because we have prepared some giveaways and gifts for you. And we also have some pop quiz session. And then for those who answer the, the very successfully to this uh, pop quiz, and we will select a few of them. And then we will provide, we will give you um, the giveaways, free giveaways, and then the gifts. So that uh, we hope that um, then to solve the question, the, the questions, you have to list very carefully and the giveaways that we have prepared uh, are the galaxy bus 2 pro and then we also have the home uh, the massage devices low frequency home massage devices and then the for the entire body for the eyes and then uh, we also um, the besides that we also uh, have prepared the uh, chicken restaurant gift cards uh, the vouchers and um, the so uh, but uh, you can only uh, join this pop quiz session and also the uh, the and also get the free vouchers and the giveaways only after you have registered on our official website. So if you have not registered uh, on this website, please do so. And then please uh, join us um, to this pop quiz session. And then I hope that you can be the lucky person to receive our gifts. And then this uh, session will be uh, done in a simultaneously. So we will provide simultaneous interpretation for this session. So Korean number one, English number two, Japanese number three. So please give us a few more minutes, seconds. Okay, then without further ado, uh, we will have we will begin uh, this session. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we will now begin to the talk concert with the citizens for the 25th International and the 10th Asia Safe Community Conference. I am the E Hyungbo Hyungbok Lee, the senior researcher at the Taejeon Sejong uh, the Institute Research Institute. And it's been uh, for quite a long uh, while that I uh, become the MC for an event. So and I'm very pleased to lead this session as an MC. And, uh, and then we have prepared this uh, session, especially uh, for our citizens. We would like to have a uh, some time of the get get um, get to know session and the get around um, gathering session with our citizens. And as mentioned, um, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have prepared a lot um, the gifts and uh, the giveaways for our the citizens who successfully answered the our pop quiz. So the, the the kind of the gifts that uh, we have prepared the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro and the Roll Frequency Home Massage devices, and then uh, well, and then we also have prepared uh, the Chicken Restaurant the vouchers uh, for like the ten persons. We will randomly select among the the uh, the answer um, the for those who answered the. Our questions, and then as mentioned, you first have to register yourself on our official website. The way that you do so, uh, you have to uh, scan to the QR code as you see on this screen on the right hand side of this screen, so that uh, please um, get access to our official website and then scan the 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 scan of uh, the QR code that you see on the screen. And then you can also um, the join us, uh, join our pop quiz session, and by downloading the from the downloading our application from your iPhone, 
or the smartphone. And the please search for the International Safe City, the annual conference forum Sejong. And then please get to registered on our camp. And so make sure that you register yourself on our uh, the website uh, so that you can be one of the strong candidates uh, to receive our free gifts. Then without further ado, um, then the, we will let's begin our talk concert about the citizens under the theme of safe season for all. Let's make it happen. As I uh, have mentioned earlier, we, um, the we will have the pop quiz session in the middle of our uh, the concert. So please, um, the concentrate on each uh, on uh, uh, the two hour to the session, and then for the session we have prepared our two presenters have prepared the presentation, and then just to give you one big hint, um, um, the if you listen to our the our presenters uh, the. Part, uh, the presentation very uh, carefully, then you will be able to get the answer to the pop quiz. So um, we, uh, our the first presenter, um, he is uh, Mr. Chong Il La, is the the vice uh, the. Now uh, he is the the also the the vice leader of this of the Disaster Safe Institute. And uh, he, uh, just to give you some more background about Mr. Chong Il La, he served as a the professor at the Japan Totori, the National University, and then his major was the engineer, uh, the social um, the based engineering. He also the served important roles in the Chungbung National University firefighting the. Research Center, and uh, he also um, the, have worked a lot in the disaster management. So that so let's welcome him on stage, and he will give us a lecture under the title of disaster evacuation and the engagement with the citizens. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I am La Zhang Il from the Korea. Disaster Relief Association. I will talk about the disaster relief and community participation. So the term disaster relief is not something familiar. Community participation, I think you hear a lot, but you don't know anything about in terms of the actions. First, the disaster relief, when we have the uh, rainstorms, typhoons, the following that we have a displaced and temporary shelter living in their temporary shelter and seeking the psychological counseling, we help them back to the normalcy. That's what we are doing in disaster relief efforts. So usually when it comes to disaster management, prevention, preparedness, response and recovery. And out of that Disaster relief belongs to the recovery stage. If that is the case, in disaster relief, why we need engaged citizens? If we hit by the natural disasters like earthquake, and then the affected communities are seeking less of the uh, resources. However, local communities are lacking in human resources. And when this massive natural disasters hit, the local uh, governments themselves are also the victims. So they cannot keep up with the loss of needs, overwhelmed needs. So we have to turn to the systems or organizations like Korea Disaster Relief Associations or the Volunteer Citizen Corps active in disaster. We need that. That's why we strike a balance between the overwhelming needs and the um, the relief efforts. Maybe you've never heard about our association, Korea Disaster Relief Association. So let me play the promotional video. It was founded in 1961, the first private um, 
disaster relief organization also raising the donations and fund for the relief and humanitarian effort. So please watch it. <laughs> We 언제나 희망 브릿지는 국민과 함께 걸어왔습니다. 희망 브릿지는 설립 이래 재난으로 도움이 필요한 지역 사회에 적극적인 구호 활동을 펼쳐왔습니다. 지난 2001년 제1구호법 개정을 통해 정부로부터 유일하게 권한을 부여받은 법정 구호 단체로 제도약하였습니다. 태풍, 지진, 산불 등 예측할 수 없는 재난 상황을 맞은 오늘날에는 정부 및 지자체 등 유관기관과의 협력을 통해서 빠르게 실질적 도움을 주기 위해 신속하고 적절한 대응 체계를 마련하고 있습니다. 현재까지 1조 5천억 원의 상금과 5천만 점 이상의 물품을 도움이 필요한 이웃들에게 지원하며 어려움을 하루빨리 극복해 일상으로 돌아갈 수 있도록 도와주는 다리가 되어지고 있습니다. 희망 브릿지는 사랑의 열매가 뜻하는 구호, 모금, 봉사의 정신에 따라 지속 활동하고 있습니다. 1961년 설립 이후 재난 구호 활동에 기념비적인 발자취를 남겨온 희망 브릿지는 각종 재난으로 아픔을 겪는 국민과 함께하며 현장에서 축적한 경험과 노하우를 보유하고 있습니다. 재난을 겪은 이웃을 돕기 위한 개인, 셀럽, 기업 등 수많은 기부자들의 따뜻한 마음이 피해 이웃에게 닿을 수 있도록 노력하고 있습니다. 도움이 필요한 곳이 어디든 신속히 달려가 상처 입은 이웃의 마음을 달래기 위해 재난 현장 구호 활동과 예방 활동을 목적으로 봉사단을 운영하고 있습니다. 앞으로의 재난은 복잡하고 다양해지는 양상입니다. 희망 브릿지는 재난 안전 연구소를 통해 관련 연구와 세미나, 포럼, 교육을 진행하며 관련 정책 개선 및 선진적 재난 구호 서비스 제공을 위해 노력하고 있습니다. So did you watch the video? It was a bit fast unfolding. So this year, in March, Ulgin and Samchak, the eastern coastal areas of Korea, we have a massive wildfires. It was in 30 years. Some say that 30,000 soccer fields or one third of Seoul metropolitan area are all consumed by fire. Not to mention that, A whole village uh, also burned down. So it was a horrific catastrophe. Usually, when we talk about the wildfires, do you believe this is a natural or the man made? We believe that it is a natural disaster. However, when we categorize the disasters, Wildfires are part of social disasters because the reason behind these wildfires is the uh, smoking butts or the intentional setting the fires, arson. That's why wildfires are now currently under the category of the social and man-made disasters. I think in the video clips, you see that in 2022, when the disaster struck the neighborhoods, we work with the private sectors, NGOs, and volunteer groups to deliver the uh, relief supplies and the laundries. So 500,000 uh, goods were delivered. What's noteworthy is that when we also support the citizens, also there is a growing interest in the companion animals. Maybe many of you sitting here have at least one or more pets and companion animals at your home. 
So we also have a high interest in how we take care of, how we give the relief to the companion animals because the companion animals are not allowed to disc the shelters. The same is true for the flooding and the wildfires. They are not allowed to uh, enter the shelters right now. Under the law, the assembly areas or the shelters do not allow the entrance of the companion animals. But as a recommendation how to cope with the disaster, the, now this this now reflected in the family disaster evacuation plan. That's why promptly we set up the survival kit and relief kit for this companion animals. So we, we are not one of the first to set up that. It was uh, developed and prepared by one of our chat charters in Korea, and we get them, then we uh, get them uh, distributed to the affected families. And this year, again, the two natural disasters gave the devastations to the Korean Peninsula, flooding and typhoons, particularly Hinnamno. So Typhoon Hinnamno hit Korea in early September. Maybe uh, you don't know the uh, severity of the natural disaster, but thanks to the volunteer work, we have successful relief operations like mass feeding and also the laundry truck service. The reason why I said that in the natural disaster hit neighborhood and affected areas, you get a taste of what can you do as a volunteer work. Now look around to our neighboring countries. Uh, in 2010, from June to July, I was in Indonesia, Merapi volcanic eruption. And the villages, they have the uh, evacuation drills. And as you see that we say the 120% miracle because people participated in the evacuation drills beforehand and somehow Indonesia is a bit less advanced countries but how 100% 120% participate in the drills because the reason is when they do that, they get lots of assistance and support. For example, they have a compensation for the time they participate. And also it is now conducting at the village level, like they set up the karaoke or the villagers can get uh, the lunch boxes or the uh, village evacuation centers in return for participating in the drills. Maybe you wonder why we bother to give this extra assistance. But when it comes to building the bridges and dams, it uh, we have to spend enormous m amount of money. For drills, it doesn't cost that much, but it's directly related to the human lives. That's why you need to incentivize when you conduct these drills. And eventually it worked? Yes. So in August, they had the drills. And two months later, actually, the volcano erupted, claiming 350 lives and 270,000 were evacuated. But in eight villages who participated in the drills, miraculously is a zero fatality. Maybe there are many reasons coming into play because first of all, it's a perfect timing two months after the drills, the disaster struck. But what I'm saying is that the drills you do that can save lots of lives. So when Sejong also organized lots of drills like this, how about Japan? We have also the Citizen Corps active in disaster. The same is true in Japan. So lots of volunteers who belong to, who are affiliated with these groups, they have lots of disaster uh, relief efforts. So the case in point is that the safe and secure village making campaign. 
so that uh, the the we our our activities are more extensive than what they are doing in Japan. But what was more noteworthy is that they learn lessons and they draw upon the lessons so that they their lessons are reflected in their follow up action plan and evaluate after being evaluated. So this cycle is really important to really honing up the very good evacuation plan. And also the evacuation and safety for the children is really important. This is the Wakayama Prefecture. It's like a county or district level administrative units in Japan. So every morning, the children is now uh, part of the conducted at the kindergartens and preschool day cares. So they practiced tsunami evacuation drills. So, so as you see in this slide, some are not laid on the ground. It's a more dynamic scenario unfolding. So head of the kindergarten uh, go off to alarm, and then in the middle of the class, they are evacuated every day, every morning. I'm not saying you have to do that every morning, but now these days, preschool daycare centers and kindergartners, as far as I know, they now participate in the fire drills again that need to be embedded in the daily life. So in the time of this emergency, you can do that, what you learn. And lots of activities are involving in the citizen educated relief, like uh, raising donations, or psychological, psychological relief effort, or care and recovery. And also the training and education is a part of a relief effort. And we also welcome when we are part of this relief campaigns. That is the temporary shelters when the uh, wildfire struck that. You see that um, very rap rapidly and promptly they are reconstructed. But we don't have to remember is that when they lost their uh, lives and the, also the houses, we have to give the helping hand. So for the better safe community, Sejo, I am asking for very active citizen participation and engagement so that we can boost our resilience. So resilience is very important and necessary when you get back on our track after disaster. Thank you. So he talked about what happened recently. So now I will give you a quiz. So please stand with me on the table. So in the presentation, maybe you may heard. Are you ready? So you read the quiz. Okay, question is, <clears throat> so which of the following is not a natural disaster? First, earthquake, number two, heat wave, number three, wildfire, number four, dust storm. No, you don't have to raise your hands. <laughs> Please download the applications in your mobile phone. So the speaker already mentioned, mentioned it. So in the past, it is a natural disaster, but recently is now categorized as a social disaster. So when you climb the ham, you are not allowed to carry the, the, the lighter. So the answer, correct answer is number three, wildfire. So according to the basic law on the safety and disaster, natural disasters, typhoon, flooding, rainstorm, snow, and about the social one is the chemical, biological, and biological, and torrential rains. So 
if you listen carefully and you may get the correct answer. Now the second question, a bit difficult, it's a subjective question. It could be a bit tough. In the event of the disaster, the target of the relief is the displaced, blank, and those in need of psychological support. Please fill the blank. And four letter word. I read you once again. In the event of disaster, the target of relief is the displaced. Four word letter. And those in need of psychological support. So who are they? Please fill the blank. <laughs> Somebody says sleeping. Your time is up. So the correct answer is temporary evacuees. So in the event of disaster, if you are temporarily evacu evacu evacuated at the request of the administration, or you can uh, evacuate it on your own, and then you can be eligible to the psychological support and other recovery and relief. The last question. Very simple, OX quiz. When disasters take place like a typhoon, you feel threatened and you shelter in evacuated assembly areas like school gyms. Are you allowed to bring your companion animals there? Yes, O, X for no, it's O, X, quiz. Is it tough? The answer, yeah. So it's a big gatherings are in the shelters. So you are not allowed to bring your companion animals there. But animals can stay outside. So you can stay with them. So here, lady mentioned in the presentation, realistically, when the disasters take place, uh, animals also can be affected infected with the diseases. So it's a bit dangerous to uh, put the uh, humans and animals together in the same place. But recently, the law is there is a growing call for uh, legislating or revising the law so the companion animals and the, the owners can stay together in the same shelter or assembly areas. Thank you for your presentation. We'll come back. Okay, so now let's invite our second speaker. Uh, she is Uzin Lee. The she is a senior researcher uh, at. Uh, she is a senior researcher uh, at uh, the. Uh, and then she received the PhD in the, the Germany, and and also uh, in the field of the urban um, the engineering. And then she also served as a, the senior researcher at the Yonsei University, Symbiote Life Tech. And um, so now she is uh, currently uh, working in the land of uh, the research institute, National Land of the Research Institute. So and the, the title that she would like to uh, talk about is what is a safe city for children. So shall we invite her on stage with big round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. I am uh, Eugene. Today, I would like to talk about um, what is a safe city for children. 
I'm sure that you know that you're also aware that this is a quite a big topic and they said it encompasses quite a lot of extensive matters so that uh, since it's, uh, it covers quite a lot of things that uh, well it is never easy um, the it is never easy to approach but uh, to us if you think it very carefully that uh, well, the children, uh, by the definition, um, the, according to the UNESCO, it's, uh, it's the children under 14. So uh, age of 14, that, that means that the, the age group is a quite a large number of children. And uh, and then we everyone has um, the, our own experience, our own knowledge, and then um, our own insight. That means that everyone interprets just the situation or the circumstances that we live in according to our experience and according to our own understanding. So when we um, define the safety of the children, uh, and then, well, they will, for instance, like the doctors, they would approach the safety issue, well, in accordance with the disease, how the disease treatment and stuff. And for others, and people who belong to other um, the sectors, they would define that they would approach the safety issue from a from their angle, from their uh, perspective. So that this, uh, when it comes to the safety, though it can be very extensive, it can be um the very different from the per different sector to sector. Sector, but at the same time, it implies that we have to approach this issue from the multidisciplinary manner and then we have to see it from multiple perspectives. So I would like to, um, I'm here uh, to share with you what the safe uh, child, um, the city for children is and then I would like to uh, share with you uh, so my perspective. So what comes into your mind when we talk about uh, the safe city for children? The first thing that to uh, that comes into our mind, well, to me, is the urban planning. And because uh, that, uh, well, these are kind of the minor, uh, the minor uh, the areas, minor research uh, areas, which has not been talked about much in our society. So, uh, and then when we, uh, the, uh, and then, well, we normally uh, approach uh, the children's safety issue in regard to the traffic accidents because there are the, quite a lot of the rates and the specific numbers in regard to the traffic accidents that occurred to the children. And then a lot of the research is uh, of the, in regard to this. And then, but I would like to broaden this other topic oh, and because the children can be uh, at risk of the safety uh, for many other um, the regions. So. That, well, since I studied quite a long period of time in Germany, I'd like to share with you what other the areas that we need to um, the focus on when it comes to the children's safety. This uh, is, the, as you can see here, this is the traffic accident, um, the rate for the domestic, uh, the children in the con uh, in in Korea. So as you see here, from the year 2015 to 2019, um, the car, uh, the traffic accident uh, happened to children. The the uh, nearby the their school zone, uh, the, uh, around the 300 meters around their school zone, it was about 35 percent, and that the total number of the accidents uh, case was 55,478 uh, cases, and um, and as you can see here carefully, uh, and then. Uh, uh, and if you look at this chart carefully, 35% of the entire accidents have traffic accidents happened to our children were near their um, the school zone, and uh, so that quite a lot of the accidents actually happened near the schools, and then um, uh, and then around the six uh, uh, around the six to eight p.m. Well, we normally uh, the, well if, if you look at this chart carefully, well someone would see think that oh isn't it uh, the, isn't it with common sense that well, since they, the school children finish their school around the four to six, and then so uh, well, that's that's the uh, that's the reason that we have the higher rate. And then do we have enough preventive me measures in this regard? So. And uh, well, there are several the projects uh, that's going on uh, to increase a uh, safe traffic safety for our children. These are say, some of the uh, the examples as you see here. The first one we have the school zone. Um, the well, and then so the cars have to so decelerate um, around the school zone. But um, and. 
Uh, but uh, and then what well, we also done run the uh, trainings and the uh, campaigning uh, to the drivers so that uh, they have to be more cautious and careful when they are uh, driving uh, around the school zone uh, the school zones but uh, that's never enough uh, so that uh, and then uh, the training itself is not enough uh, so that we have the specific of uh, the zones, uh, the uh, training zones to children as well. So, um, so that the children also know how to avoid this kind of the traffic accident so that we provide a dual training both to our dr um, drivers and the children the, the the limitations to this is that we do not have enough um the training zones in korea so that and then um, the, so we also uh, so that we need to expand this kind of the training the areas and then uh, we uh, and that we have a very the uh, eye catching uh, the signs as well as we mark it with a different colors so that to uh, let the people uh, the know much more easy easily that uh, well to mark that today's um, uh, this specific zones are for the children's safety and I'm sure that you have heard about this word smombie it means that uh, it's a two com combined words of the the smartphone and zombie and that these um, it refers to those of people who who are stick to their smartphones and uh, while they're walking they are not fully aware of uh, all the surroundings because they are uh, their focus is solely on their smartphone and then so well nowadays the kids are also there a lot of kids are smombies so that they are less, uh, less aware of the cars approaching them and the, which lead to the traffic accidents and um so well to uh, prevent uh, to um to prevent uh, this um the uh, to protect the children uh, or the people with uh, the smombi um then uh, we have to uh mark uh, differently on the on the crossroad especially on the floor so that uh, maybe we can alert the, the child pedestrians um uh, in terms of this uh, by giving them the the auditory signals when they try to cross the road or we can the mark with the different colors on the street so that well as their face face as their the, the tensions are on the downside they can still know what's going on as the uh, um and the whether whether they are the crossing the the right to put the uh, the cross road and then um so these are the kind of efforts that we are working on and then um, uh, the near the we also the perform we also initiate um, outreach training campaigns so we go to uh, that we visit the schools and we provide the so we provide uh, the trainings that what the children need to do uh, when they cross road and uh, to avoid uh, the traffic accidents and then uh, and this is in um, Korea. Uh, there, well, there were quite a lot of uh, the opinions uh, in regard of complaints and opinions in regard to the motorcycles because they sometimes they do not um, the comply uh, do not um, comply with the traffic rules, and then the, they can be very uh, the danger. They they are uh, the faster driving, and then uh, it can be very the dangerous to the school children. So, and uh, we also run uh, the trainings uh, for the motorcycle drivers. And uh, but besides, well, besides that, we also the train we have like campaigning programs, uh, especially to our parents as well. Because about if we train our if we train our parents, well, they can be uh, the, they can also teach their children how important it is um, to uh, to follow the traffic rules. And then, well, the, in the case of the URL, as you can see from here, all those like dots, blue dots, uh, as you see on the on the on this map, and. These are the kind of the training, safety training, the courses and what programs are provided to both the children and uh, children and the parents. This is a case uh, of uh, the 
Germany. And uh, this similar type of uh, training is also uh, conducted in uh, France as well. And then uh, if those uh, children and the parents uh, that are successfully complete this uh, training course, they get uh, the uh, kind of the relevant uh, certificate. So, and, um, and then, uh, but so that well, and then this kind of the very uh, the systematic um, the the very systematic the traffic safety program um, is conducted in the France, especially for those in the in France for those children uh, before uh, the, in, the, in their kindergarten who are ready to attend elementary school. They have to uh, visit these trainings and they need to undergo this uh, kind of the safety training with their parents and then need to submit um, the, their certificate of the traffic safety um, the certificate uh, to the elementary school school they are about to get in and uh, so t uh, these are the several other uh, the the other train other signs and then on the uh this is the german's case and, and then this sign the one on the very left top that means that sh this is a playground for children and then the one that uh that marks uh, the x with it that means that uh, the the upper one is that is a, it means that it's a playground for children, and then the lower one is that children cannot go, um, cannot um, play there, and then uh, there's also this circle. It, it, it marks that well, this is a place for children, so that um, this is a place for children, so the cars are not allowed to, to come in. The reason that uh, in the Germany they have this kind of the special zones for children to play is that for adults. For grown-ups, they we are um, able to visit many different places to hang out there or to the for sightseeing. But we do not have much space, uh, especially for children. So that um, that um, and then especially well to provide the children with the special the playground. Well, the um, that means that we have to we have to have the vehicle control system in place, and then we also need to have get the consent from the of the local residents so that um the so these are the the kind of some of the events so the for the upper one uh, the photo is from the berlin germany and the, the lower one is the austria bean and the, these kind of the uh, the campaigning events kind of show that uh, to mark and the, to promote the idea that there are specific zones uh, especially for children to play and that that means that uh, either uh, for the vehicles that come uh, that need to pass by they need to either slow down uh, or that that they need to go up the they need to make a detour and um, for next one uh, this is the um, the child engaged program so now this example is also from the children well for this what is uh, special about this this program is that the they listen from the children uh, so it's much more the customized and a needs-based approach so that well the, for this uh, to run this program uh, the the relevant officers visit uh, that uh, they visit the the where the children are and then they get um, they visit them and then they well with the children they uh, they kind of the tour around their communities and then so with, uh, along with the children they try to detect and identify the risky zones and uh, it kind of the areas that are vulnerable to traffic accidents so that um, the, so the the relevant uh, the government officers and uh, the universities the volunteer university student volunteers and then also the children who live in um, in that residential area, they all call, come together and they make, uh, form a team, and then they tour around their neighborhood and then to try to identify the risky zones, and um, and then they try, they affect they reflect and then the the ideas they find out they are reflected on the on their the local policies, and then. Uh, and then they also, uh, for this case, this is like a case of the Switzerland. They collected um, the opinions from the 500 children, so they run a survey, and then, uh, um, and then, uh, so they reflected uh, the their opinion on their uh, relevant policy, as you can see here. 
And uh, so, well, the kind of the ideas that uh, the opinions that are drawn from the children is that, oh, please make a playground for us. And um, well, it kind of, of well, to some people, the ideas um, that they came up with were the the proposals they came up with maybe up to naive or were too childish. But well, they, uh, but. Uh, the, but the in, engaging the children into this program is very crucial, and that is a part of uh, the inclusive program. And then, so uh, and then, uh, but this kind of uh, the event um, uh, it projects involves uh, a lot of the stakeholders because uh, they we, they need to to create a um, playground in a certain neighborhood. They will the we need to talk to the landlords and the police stations. It involves quite a lot of the stakeholders, but so the active participation, um, active participation by the community people is very important. So as you can see from this, uh, quite a lot of the European uh, cases, the well, they listen very carefully to the children uh, who are actually living in that residential communities, and then um, they try to um, they include the children as part of the of the the part of the community members and then so so that when it comes to the safety of the children their children's own ideas are well reflected to the to, to the program and um, uh, so let's come back to uh, the Korea. When it comes to Sejong City, Sejong City is a quite a young city. So that um, well, see, well, if that means that it has a lot of potential, we can um, newly begin quite a lot of things. So that uh, well, we can um, um, work, we can uh, we can also come up with quite a lot of the children's safety programs in Sejong, uh, but um, the, our the mindset changing. Our the, but, but before we do anything in Sejong or in Korea, that we need to have the perception. We need to have our perceptions were prejudiced, um, the uh, changed, so that we need to have the more open-minded um, before we initiate something. So, and then, well, but maybe whatever things that can be very small at the beginning, but um, the, if we have, um, if we start to uh, listen to their, the children's voices and they reflect, try to reflect them, then with this small change can make a great impact in the long run. So thank you very much uh, for your uh, great uh, insightful presentation. And you have uh, mentioned that uh, Sejong is a quite young uh, the city and uh, with a lot of children living in. Maybe um, this, I'm sure that well, we can also, in Sejong, we can do quite a lot of things for the protection of our children in Sejong city. So, okay, so thank you very much for your insightful presentation. So now this is um, time for the uh, pop quiz. So are you all ready? So this first one is a multiple question. So pop quiz number one. There is a street zone in Korea where vehicles are asked to decelerate or are not allowed to pass through. As such street zones are dedicated to children or aged under 14. What is the name of such street zones? One is child protection zone, two play zone, three green road for a safe street. Well, if you have listened to our the presentation, our presenters on um, the uh, for our children, uh, for our presenters, um, the speech, I'm sure that you know the answer right away. So to give you one hint, it's uh, related to children. So the answer is number two, play zone, playground. Okay. Number two, short answer question. This word describes a person who walks on a street with their heads down because of their frequent use of cell phone, or we, uh, we uh, this uh, describes a walking person using a cell phone who is oblivious to the world around them. This is this has become a big social issue because everyone is uh, just so involved into in their smartphones and uh, their heads are always down. It's only focused on on their uh, the cell phones, cell phone screen. So it's a two combined words, a smartphone and a zombie. The answer is, the answer is zombie.
Okay, next one is OX quiz. Traffic accidents of children occur the most around 4 to 6 p.m. If you think it is correct, yes, no, X. So if you had listened to the presentation carefully, I'm sure that you know the answer right away. Okay, time is up. The answer is yes, O. Oh. So 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, is around the time that children finish their school and they go home. So, and then in the morning time, usually, well, there are quite a lot of the volunteer workers and the supporters who protect the children on their way to school. So that the, quite a lot of the traffic accidents actually happen uh, when the when the children finish their school and they go back to their house. That's uh, around four to six p.m. So this, uh, so thank you very much uh, the, for your uh, great presentation and also the pop quiz. So this now is a free Q&A time. So we might have to uh, rearrange our uh, the podium. So please give us a few seconds. Our two other uh, presenters have shared with us the example uh, example cases of the advanced countries. So I don't, but that does not mean that um, the the uh, we are uh, we are underperforming when compared to other uh, European countries, other advanced countries. Uh, and but uh, well, we are also doing very well to lower down the the traffic accidents. Uh, and uh, but we are just want to be more cautious and then to. Uh, um, to ask for uh, the our citizens um, the the uh, participation and engagement and uh, well before uh, each and one of us uh, should be more uh, the interested in uh, the people we live with and like our neighbors we are next door uh, people who live in your next door so that we can be together make a more a safe city for all So how was the quiz? Paul was a pop quiz. Was it difficult? If you had to listen to the presentation carefully, I'm sure that you knew the the answers right away. So please stick uh, with us until the end of this session because we have a few more questions uh, underway. So question about the giveaways. When do we get the the giveaways? Uh, please wait until this session uh, is finished. So thank you very much, our two presenters, for the amazing the presentation. So for this uh, Q and A panel discussion session, so uh, but this is an open Q and A uh, the session. But we also have the two panel discussions for this uh, session. Let me introduce them uh, to you. The first one is. So first discussion is Shin Jin Do. He's now the senior research officer at National. Disaster Management Research Institute. One more panelist. She lives in Sejong City. She is now Citizen Safety Fellow at the Sejong City Sovereign Council. How many children do you have? You have two. I'm a just ordinary citizen in Sejong. So introductions are made. So first, Dr. Shin is the uh, Dr. La presented. What was your ideas? What's your take on? You are responsible for the local community safety indexes. Can you share how you feel? And you can ask one question. And to that, Dr. Lau will respond. Very glad to see you all about the local community safety index. 
uh, I'm not in a good position to say about the indexes. Whenever I come to Sejong, how Sejong is safer than others statistically and realistically. I'm engaged in this safety. I was invited to many occasions on safety. I rarely look around in the bag because there are empty seats. So only it, the occasions are about the expert and specialist. When I come up to the podium, many people are still sitting in the seat. Ah, I, and I realize that it's so raising awareness. It's the reason why Sejong is safer than others. As Joe mentioned that I have three kids. When I heard the presentations, those two ideas struck me, come to my mind. The first one is from disaster to hope, hope bridge. Yes, if we have a hope in time of disaster, and that's really relief. I've never aware of the existence of these organizations. So I just have a curiosity how they work, who they are working there. But now I can have a sliver of hope in times of the disaster. So I was a bit relieved in that sense. The second one is now I'm a father of three kids. After listening to the second presentation, that is give me a time of pause. Can children play safely? Right after the school is over, I have a question about what kind of private schools or cram schools I have to send off to. But now I have to take care more about the safety. From the private cramming school to the playground, so I have to play more safely with my kids. Maybe it can be helpful to those in the audience. And also, Mr. Lai is an expert in the field. I have one question I'm curious about. So, speakly, honestly speaking, disaster doesn't ever happen expectedly. It happens so out of nowhere when the children or my family members are away, not gathered, uh, not in the same place. But if we say that we have a mobile phone and we can call up, where are you, my son? I'm here, so please come over here. That's how we can be reunited. We will be evacuated. But whenever the disaster happens, we think about the worst case scenario. You lose the connections. You don't know about the whereabout of your children and wife. That's usually what the, when the disaster happens. So maybe we can draw upon a plan for the family evacuation. And you have a plan in place. And when the disaster hit, uh, maybe reunification uh, it can be much easily. The disaster itself, in itself, over itself, is very tough. And if you are not reunified with your family members, how tough it is. It can be very rare in so in Sejong. So Mr. La, when in the event of the disaster, citizens, how they have to prepare, how they draw upon a plan for the family so that the family reunion, whereabout of family members can be easily identified. Thank you. I think the, you asked the question, but you already have an answer in your questions. I have three sons as a father of three sons and kids. My response is that so family-based evacuation plan need to be formulated in advance, but usually family members don't talk about that. Take for example, in my family, the middle school, elementary school, and the kindergartners, they have all different places. I work here in my workplaces. My wife is at home during the weekends and holidays family members get together, but the working days, we are all scattered around. 
So we have a systematic systems. We have individual plans for the systematic one. Every institution has its own evacuation diagram and plan. So you have to follow it. But for the families, you don't have to insist on coming back. You have to stay in the safe shelters. You talk about the communication devices, phones, for example. Maybe phone connection cannot be easily uh, that. But if you have a SMS platforms like a line and cacao, and then the communication may be easily readable. So what I'm saying is that you don't have to insist on coming back home. You stay in the safer place. So under whatever circumstances, you can, for example, uh, pick one specific place for the assembly areas. But already these kind of assembly areas are designated by the local government. So the assembly areas uh, in your vicinity Usually, the uh, gyms in the schools are designated assembly areas in your neighborhood. If you are away from your school and you can let them know that you will come to you, like a post up your note or messages on the door of your home. So what must be clear is that you have to let them your movements. You have to let them, your neighbors or the family members, at least, and then the family members will not be scattered around. One more tip is that basically the evacuation kit or the rucksack um, maybe can be packed up. So, for example, if you go to the nearest uh, destruction offices and then the last of the so called emergency kit like a blanket or the emergency uh, medical supplies are all in this emergency kit. So you can put it in your backpack. Thank you. I believe that I have to carry my cover when disaster strikes. I believe that everyone is gathered together and then maybe we can increase the um, the birth rate. So we have at least more than one child. So the safe evacuation is really important. So please talk about how can they can be evacuated in times of the disaster. So please give a try. Okay. Uh, so uh, Professor Researcher Cho Sung, would you please uh, share with us your comments and then any other additional ideas? So uh, first uh, from Ujin. I am uh, that I live in this area and then also that I have the, uh, I am the mother of two kids. And um, I also well, it comes into mind that uh, this conference uh, being held in Sejong, so it's been uh, two days, and as uh, I am also the part of the citizen, I am also the citizen to Sejong, and then I also feel very grateful, and then I also be proud that the Sejong city, that where I live, uh, hosted this kind of the great event, uh, the relevant to safe city, and. Uh, and uh, all around the world, uh, all around uh, the nation, wide, um, I think that Sejong city is very unique in that uh, the, a lot of people are actually, well, this is not where they uh, originally come from. They somehow used to uh, live uh, elsewhere and then they were relocated to this place uh, for, the, let's say, for the work reasons and for their career, their job is here. So that, well, this is very unique, uh, the future of uh, Sejong, and then I, 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 uh, I think that in the people, uh, a lot of the citizens of Sejong, they are very active and participating at uh, the safe uh, community related events. And then I also that uh, since um, the uh, I also that since I live here, and that I saw and that this uh, safe city is part of my career is uh, my where my expertise lies in. I hope that I really learned a lot. Uh, 
through this um, today events, and then uh, and then well, a lot of our the experts have mentioned that um, the uh, engagement uh, by our citizens is very important to create a safe city, more safer, and uh, so that uh, I think that it is our role that it is our role that uh, the to create uh, the kind of the infrastructure or the kind of policies that we can encourage our uh, our citizens to take part in uh, safe community events, and they also work on the uh, community, the neighbor, uh, the to talk about the citizens, um, the awareness. And then as mentioned, I am also um, the mother of the two kids and then they are teenagers. And then uh, as our one of our pre previous uh, the speaker has mentioned about the, the safe uh, the city for children. And then well, my two kids, and they are uh, my t my teenage uh, the two boys are really running here and there, and then sometimes I feel that well, they, it is very dangerous if they don't have be be careful, especially when they uh, they cross the road. So sometimes I I well I also have I wonder I also wonder how I can uh, educate and my children to be safer, um the, the to uh, to protect my uh, to make my children much more safer when they cross the road, and then um. And then I was really impressed uh, by the the cases uh, of the European countries uh, that our uh, one of our presenter has mentioned, and well, because about well, the European cases, uh, they those countries they uh, listen to the children's ideas and they reflected their ideas uh, on the on their safety policies, and so they they created the special children protection zones and stuff. So that uh, I think that's something that Korean or Korea also need to adopt because if they, uh, if our children can be also be part of um, the groups, in, if they are engaged to this uh, safe community projects, then well, I think that's what they we. It is also part of the training and education. So um, and then if they uh, their ideas and uh, are reflected, then we can really together make a safe city for all and and then for the Sejong city in this we are in the old Sejong city um, so well I would like to uh, ask our the our the presenters and then people here that uh, for what would be the the policies uh, what uh, do would you like to recommend anything for the Sejong city uh, the for to create the Sejong city more um, the safer for children thank you for your question uh, do we need, um, so for the UNICEF, for example, uh, that a lot of people that mistakenly think that the children, uh, the UNICEF, just they collect a lot of funds and then that do help. Uh, to help the people in uh, the children in needs, but well, actually, the what they do is much it is much more broader than that. And then uh, when the children, well, they since they do not children do not have the voting rights, that's why well they are in many cases uh, that not considered as part of very important mainstream the citizens, and then they are quite they are uh, the ideas and their voices are in many times. On heart, so the what UNICEF uh, does is that well is to listen to their is to secure their rights and then to have um, more of their voices reflected on our policies, and then so that um, we a lot. Uh, I think that's what we need to do um, uh, the, for as an adult and for the administrators. Uh, we need to um, the. We need to work hard, harder, to listen to the children's voice. And then, uh, what the kind of the problems that we actually have is that even if there is a problem issue regarding the children's rights, and then it's very, it is something that we all need to adapt. And then, but uh, the to to actually have their voices heard um, on uh, on a policy wise it takes at least a two to three years and then we cannot guarantee the sustainability of such policies um, the, on children so um, uh, because 
so that um and then the, therefore having their children the voices uh, ch voices of the children heard is very important because uh, nowadays the birth rate is going down and then um and then they do not have the voting rights and then the, we we in many cases so we uh, do not take much um, interest in them but we have to always consider that uh, they uh, their um, ideas their perception are somehow shaped when uh, a, a person's ideas and shapes are um, ideas are shaped in their younger age so that it's very important to, well to reflect their ideas on our policies so that because they are the future generations who will lead our world and then um, so that uh, we need to keep in mind that both hear, her hearing their um, the opinions is very important. I once had a chance to interview uh, the on uh, two one thousand two hundred person two hundred children, and then well, I was really surprised to find out that quite a lot of the children answered that uh, um, answer to the question that where do you think it is the safe place to visit when if you are in danger, and then they said that uh, it will be the convenience store because it's open 24 7 in most cases and then well and then I asked them why not the police station and then the children answered me that oh I don't know where the police station is and then I don't know what can police officers do for me if I am at risk if I'm in danger so they the first place they would prefer visiting in the time of needs it will be the convenience store, uh, the conven uh, convenience stores. So that um, I really, I was really uh, the surprised to listen to their answers. So that uh, I think that the promotion of the uh, promotion campaignings on children and listening to their ideas is also very important. Thank you very much for your opinion, uh, and then. Nowadays, we hear a lot about the word the personal uh, mobility, keyboard, and then okay, Rani. Well, these kind of the the devices so are the vehicles, and the very the simplified of uh, the vehicles is like the quick board uh, so, or the bicycles, and then of uh, the. They are very portable, and then it's uh, well, and then well, this kind of the personal mobility devices. How can uh, we ensure the, the safety use of them? I well, that was my top of my interest, and uh, well, let me share with you the case of the Germany, and then um. Well, there's no the right answer to the this question, but basically, and then I think the training is very important because when children use this kind of the uh, the electric kickboards, both the kids are uh, in many cases they perceive those kind of the mobility uh, devices as, as something that's fun, but they don't they really. Th think that well they need to protect themselves and that it can be very uh, that they can be at risk that they can be in danger uh, if they do not use such mobility devices carefully so I think that training and the campaigning is very uh, is a uh, the utmost important thing so that uh, and then uh, we have to uh, also that not just the training, but uh, and then also that we have to work on the policy wise as well. And then well, how to protect the children? We need to make the kind of the traffic, um, the safety related laws in that regard. So the how to contr uh, how to limit the traf uh, the vehicles speed and stuff. So thank you very much for your other uh, answer. So due to the limit of time. Um, So let me ask you uh, the one uh, each one that uh, let me ask you one question. What can be done? Uh, what will be the priority thing that we need to do in Sejong to make this city a more safer place? So please answer. Sorry for this is really announced surprise question. Make it simple. Interest should be first for the citizens. So where you live, what are the most dangerous space when you have an idea or not and make a big difference. So in your daily lives, what is the most vulnerable and 
the dangerous areas. You have to know, you have to pay attention to that. And then safety is a bit better. So people's attention and interest, the interest in the dangerous area. Things, the suicide is also requires the attention and interest. Maybe it's more effective than the policy making. So attention and interest. The I believe that uh, you have to realize how you are empowered when you ask for that. So I think that this is the most powerful movement for the citizen empowerment. So citizens need to be empowered than any other times before. So when I ride a bicycle, when I say that there are incoming uh, incoming auto motor bicycle, I think that the most of the citizens can also see the uh, problems. Don't just get it passed. You have to give your feedbacks to the local government. That could be one idea. It's like a reporting or if you see something wrong and you have to make it correctly rectified by report. So please report using the applications, download it. And every year, those who make uh, most frequent reporting can get also some um, reward. And Dr. Shin, I was about to talk about the reporting, citizen reporting. My blood, blood type is A, so unexpected surprise is always tough for me. If I put something in summary, you pay attention, you are empowered, and you have to report. You talk about the reporting citizens' reporting system and complaint system. The reason is that the fastest route for your ideas being implemented is to make a report. But once you plan to make a report, you are not sure whether it is safe or the car parked here is safe or not. Before you make a judgment, you have to know whether it is safe or not. And you can ask the, the citizen education and training sessions, like a safety related programs, training. So you have to, uh, uh, you have to know more knowledge so that you can be empowered, you get your voice heard, and you make a reporting through this so-called complaint system. And then every citizen in the country can enjoy less of riding and kickboard. So put things in practice, education and training. So the importance of education and training is now mentioned and proposed by Dr. Lee. And Ms. Ms. Joel, I think I'm the most disadvantaged but I'm the last, last one to have a microphone, education, attention, interest. I think the awareness, maybe this is more about the right-based approach. Participation practice is important. But I think that rule and base need to be followed so that you also have to law abiding principle so that the duties, duty is also important to follow. So you, he, she talked about the duties. Instead of enjoying your right, you have to fulfill your duties. Thank you. I give you one more quiz, but before that, I will give you a housekeeping announcement. Again, you have to log on to our website. So please download our applications, and then we will select 10 for the giveaways. My personal comments.
So I was the first grader in 1977, I guess. So when I went to school, my mom packed up the lunch boxes and then I carry my backpack. I think it's a quite a long distance. I think walk around one hour. So on the way to school, I was a bit of the so-called play truantly after school. On the way home, I played in my neighborhoods, play with my kids and friends. So my backpack is filled with lunch boxes. But the important one is at around six o'clock, my father get back home and we have dinner. And then and you can see the moms calling their kids if we are not allowed to go home and then I have to skip the dinner. What I'm saying is then going back to school and coming back, parents don't have any worries because we are so safe back then. But people, including me, we have lots of worries about the safety. So we hold hands with the uh, grandsons and then go back home. This is the daily routine for my, for example, my father. So it's really pity. We have a kind of nostalgia what happened in the past. If we don't have any worry for the safe return from my pa uh, parents and my children from school and work, so my humble wish is that at least in Sejong, we can achieve what we used to be when it comes to the safety and security. And to do that, maybe we can put what you suggested into action. Then we will be unmatched to save a place. Time is up. I'll give you three more quiz. Mm -hmm. There was a lady. Mm, it's related to the one. Say uh, So this annual conference of the safe community was the 1981. The Swedes approach that the all human beings are equal to the right to the health and safety. Based upon this principle, this annual conference was held. So please fill the blank. One is the material well-being, second one is the happiness, third one is humble ones, and fourth one is the safety. What is the correct answer? Safety. And it's a subjective question. So 25th and the 10th annual conference is now being held in Sejong, the future capital city of Korea. What is the theme of this conference? Citizen participation. Six word. Please fill the blank. Please fill the blank. Do you know the answer? So it's a hard time. The answer is International Safe Community. Last question. Is your first time to quit show? This is my also first one. Maybe I'm not good at moderating, but at least we have a very good time in talking. Last question is OX quiz. 25th International and 10th Annual Safe Community Conference is now concluded with this talk concert. Correct or wrong? So this is the end of the program or not? You want to go home? The correct answer. So what's your answer, the audience? X. I cannot conclude here. 
So the mayor will have a closing remarks and we have a closing ceremony. After the closing, uh, after this talk show um, from three o'clock, we're going to have a closing session. And also, uh, I also ask for the good attention and interest on the online. Can I get the results now? So we have a lucky draw using computer programs. So who are the lucky ones? So 10 uh, mobile vouchers will be given. So it's a randomly chosen. So here's the list. So you have a ID. So your mobile ID is now on display. Congratulations. So the winners of these mobile vouchers are on the display. Now at 3 or 5, the closing ceremony will be held. So please, online audience and also the people sitting in the seat, please stay with us. Thank you for being with us, for taking your time. And also, I really appreciate the people concerned for making this event success. And thank you so much the, to speakers and to discussant.
이제 사회자 마이크 테스트 간단하게 진행하겠습니다. 안내 말씀드리겠습니다. 잠시 후 3시 30분부터 제25차 세계 및 제10차 아시아 국제안전도시 연차대회 폐회 세션이 시작될 예정입니다. 참가 From 3.30, we will have the closing ceremony. So from 3.30, we will have the closing ceremony. So, and then we will, uh, you can also use uh, English interpretation service and the interpretation service with Korean, um, the, you can use um, Korean number one, English number two, and Japanese number three. So, for the smooth operation of the session, um, do please switch uh, your mobile phone into silent mode.
네, 잠시 안내 말씀드리겠습니다. I will give you a short housekeeping announcement from 3:30. We're going to have a closing session for the 25th and 10th Asian Safe Community Conference. So please enter the hall and take your seat. And we'll proceed with the event in Korean. Japanese and English translation service are provided. We have a receivers in the bag. So please get them. Number one for Korean, two for English, and three for Japanese. And for smooth proceeding of the conference, I kindly ask you to switch your mobiles into vibration and switch them off altogether. In a second, at 3.30, we're going to have the closing session for the 25th and 10th Asian Safe Community Conference. So if you stand outside the conference hall, please make your way into the hall and take your seat. And for smooth proceeding of the event, I cordially ask you to switch into more vibration mode and switch them off. Thank you. Here is the housekeeping announcement from 3.30. We're going to have a closing session for the conference. So please take your seat. Please enter the hall and take your seat. Thank you. It will proceed with the event in Korean, but simultaneous translation is provided. And we have receivers in the back of the conference hall. Please set your channel number one for Korean, two for English, and three for Japanese. And for the smooth proceeding of the event, I cordially ask you to switch your mobile phones off or switch them into vibration mode. Thank you.
안내 말씀 드리겠습니다. 잠... Housekeeping announcement from 3:30. We're going to have a closing session. So please, everybody, enter the conference hall and take your seat. So if you stand in the corridor outside, please enter the hall and take your seat. And I cordially ask you to switch your mobile phones or switch them into vibration mode. Thank you. So here is a housekeeping announcement from 3.30. We're going to have a closing session for the 25th International and 10th Asian Safe Community Conference. Please enter the hall and take your seat. Official language for this session is in Korean. So please get the receivers and set the channel number one for Korean number two for English, and number three for Japanese. Thank you. And please set your mobile phones into vibration mode or switch them off. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Welcome to the closing session for the 25th International and 10th Asian Safe Community Conference. I'm a moderator. Thank you for staying with us until the last minute of this closing session. Here is a brief walk through the closing ceremony. So order of the conference is that we will listen to what was discussed in the four thematic workshops, and Professor Be will talk about what we have achieved during conference, and we will also watch event highlight video. And government will also deliver closing ceremony, and vice mayor of Sejong will deliver closing ceremony. We're going to have a commemorative photo session in the end. This conference is now on air on the official website of the International Safe Community and the YouTube. So now, without much ado, we will now begin the closing session. So first, we already had the four thematic workshops in the afternoon. Uh, Dale Hansen will facilitate, and Yoko Shirahashi will also facilitate, uh, will present, and Lu Pai from Taiwan, and Dale Hansen will present for 10 minutes. So they will talk about what was discussed in the four thematic workshops. And I will hand over my microphone to Dale Hansen, the chair. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here today and uh, contributing to the, the work, the conference, to make it so successful. Um, we've had a lot of talk over the last two days about the importance of community participation in our safe community program. And we've adopted a number of words we use to describe this process. We've talked about cooperation, collaboration. We've talked about empowerment, participation, top-down, bottom-up, even subsidiary, subsidiarity. I can't even say it. Um, but what do these words mean in practice? And so the workshop aimed to explore the practical meaning of working together as a community to promote safety. And so um, we've had three groups, um, one group uh, Japanese speaking group, one group uh, speaking uh, Chinese, and another group uh, of uh, Korean people and English people um, talking, talking about the same issue. So I wonder if uh, Yoko Surashi, if you could come and uh, report on the conversation that you had um, with the Japanese speaking group. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I'm going to spend 10 minutes to summarize what we have discussed at the Japanese groups. And from now on, I would like to speak in Japanese. So in the Japanese speaking workshop, we are joined by 11 safe communities. Uh, we have around 20 people present, researchers and government officials were there. So in a total of 25 were attendees. First of all, what we have discussed is that how the citizen can be more proactively engaged in the safety programs, how we can promote the citizen participation. And also share the best practices practices in local communities, although they are not part of the systems. How we can engage more people, for example, international safe school, 
students who attend this school and then they will graduate and then they will continue to work as the supporters for the safe community so that there can be the continuity ensured and also some say that the local businesses are or uh, are actively engaged i think there are quite good trials and insurance companies are also are participated very positive talks were also made and community based activities is very important they all say that and they say they want to broaden the base for the citizen participation and necessity and importance of that uh, for example by holding the forum or workshop or financial support for the activities in the program they discuss about they discuss that and about how can proceed with the um, SC program so overall I can summarize there are two points made first administration cannot do it alone in that way the advantages of the safe committee cannot appeal to the citizens or cannot work effectively so they have to work together with the businesses in the community and many business and many communities are now working on the uh, the collaboration with the businesses and when the uh, local governments implement their plans and also policies they are now working on how their so-called um, project as business usual should it be effectively linked up to this uh, safety uh, programs without any wasting time or money so effective linkage between the usual administration work and the safety work, uh, they talk about that. They don't have to so-called overperform. Um, the resignation is important, but they also we have to um, note that how we can motivate them after the first resignation. They don't have to so much exert themselves. They don't have to so-called burn out so that um, keep the system going on for example they can spread out the information diffuse the information online using the SNS uh, platforms or they can organize the prize award that's how they can stimulate citizen participation or some say they win-win how can get the win-win scores Uh, what kind of merits the citizens can enjoy? What kind of advantages the government officials can get? So the merits can be given to the uh, government officials in charge of the safety. The other uh, government officials in other parts of the um, domain also need the or feel the benefits. And all in that sense, they say it's important to talk across the board in the organization so that everyone is on the same page. And also, we have to engage those who are not related, directly related to the safety. For example, if you are registered as the business, if you are the local businesses, if you try uh, very good practices in terms of the security, and then those businesses get extra score in, for example, the the beating uh, competitions and some also said that that the incentives are very important and also in Japan you know 
we are very shy about speaking out in the conferences. Uh, but this time is so different. Many are very keen to express their own ideas. So I try to keep uh, making some note of that, but it's not easy to keep them note down everything. Uh, but some say that the motivation is important. For the first round of the designation, they did their best, but sometimes these efforts started to so called fizzle out. How we can keep the momentum going on? So, after the first resignation, some communities, so they so called remain pretty much the same, some try to improve their systems. So, I think that the goal should be more long term basis, not the short term basis. If their goal is purely get the certification and then this safety com campaign will lose the steam in the end. So instead of getting the first round of designation, I think you have to look into the long term. So designation is not a final ultimate goal. In designation, first designation is so called uh, the process. So your journey for the safe security, a safe community should be the ongoing process. And also, you know, the there are frequent transfers in the government officials. For example, every three years they change their post. Some are assigned to the job. They are novice. They know they don't know anything about the security. And then we have to provide education. That's why everyone have a, at least the equal so-called amount of knowledge. It's how we can educate the so-called first to recruit or first transfers in the government officials. The second one is the systems, like a governance. I think most of the uh, audience are from the government side. And, and most of government officials want to know what they have to do after the first designation. When they set the goal for the first designation, they say that they happy with the uh, budget amount, but right after the first designation, they say that some of the budget slashed and the human resources are also curtailed. How they get over these challenges, they want to know. For example, um, safe community secretary's office need to be set up. So the secretary, let's say, serve as a control tower for orchestrating all these campaigns. We need this system in place. And some also said that um, this safe community uh, work is not an extra work, meaning that the safety community program should be embedded, incorporated into what they are doing. Uh, that's how we have to change the mindset in the government officials. We are only given 19 minutes. It's a bit short, but I will sum it up. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and, and really, they are two very important um, elements, aren't they, that Yoko's identified there, community engagement and um, uh, the area of governance and formalising systems so that it's built into the normal work of the partners. So I can see Lupai's there. Hi, Lupai, and uh, welcome. Hello. We'd love to hear what your group talked about. Thank you. Yeah, OK. Uh, a total of uh, 16 people participated in the Chinese version of the workshop. And uh, most of them are from Taiwan and uh, two were from mainland China. And all the participants include representatives of community residents, uh, representatives of NGOs uh, in the safe communities and uh, local government representatives and uh, the support center staff. In particular, there is a, 
uh, representative of the zoo in Taipei City, uh, which is an important partner of the Wenshan District of uh, Safe Community Program in Taipei City. The promotion of any program uh, requires funds. And the Safe Community Program in Taiwan is mainly bottom up. So the community residents have formed a Safe Community Program organization. And uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, donations from the fundraising was the main source of the funding. And individual safety, safe, safety promotion projects were uh, used to promote the safety of the community and they really need some resource. And so the government would apply the subsidy to uh, operate those uh, projects. However, uh, injury prevention and safety promotion have many aspects. Soon after the safe community organization learned that uh, they need to cooperate with more institutions and organizations and inside or or outside the community, uh, such as the cooperation with the environmental green organization. And uh, uh, while uh, they are uh, concerning ab about the beauty of the environment, at the same time, they also improve the safety of the environment. Uh, after joining the Wenshan Community Safe uh, Community Organization, and Taipei Zoo in Wenshan District has become the most important place for community safety policy, advocacy, and safety education promotion. In the development of safe community in Taiwan, local governments play a supporting role. In addition to providing the co-subsidy they must also report local needs to the higher level of the government and assist the communities to obtain uh, injury related information and deal with the environmental improvements that local governments need to address anyhow. And uh, mainland China promotes the safe community program in a top down uh, manner. So it is very strong in execution and efficiency. But the ideas of the group units and the residents in the community are less visible. So in the future, uh, they said that uh, the community will be strengthened in the part participation and the cooperation of groups organizations, institutions, enterprises, and the individual uh, residents. The consensus on the first uh, indicator, uh, so-called governance, governance, is that the organization and the management of safe community program should continue to improve as the safe community develops. So for the uh, redesignation community uh, should be required to show that the organization and the operation have been improved since the first certification of first designation. Our group also uh, discussed uh, about the, in, um, you know, so what should include in the uh, certification. Um, everyone believed that the designation is a necessary process and, uh, and very important um, issue. You know, the, in other words, um, designation or certification for the community as an international safe community is very, very important. Uh, on one hand, it gives the community a clear direction to develop into a safe community. On the other hand, it improves the visibility of the community and strengthens the possibility of the cooperation between the community and various 
public and private organizations. More importantly, the purpose of this uh, to increase the recon recognition and participation of the residents to, into this uh, safe community program. The safe community program can become a basis of community development. If the safe community develops successfully and it will more aware of the use of the effective strategies and methods to develop other projects. So after being certified as an international safe community in Jinghua, and this, uh, Jinghua, which is a very small uh, neighborhood in uh, Tainan City in Taiwan, in southern part of Taiwan. And after they won the honor of the uh, safe community uh, for the first time, and they keep on using this strategy and methods to also develop other projects. And pretty soon, and they already uh, 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 when the international friendly community and uh, the world uh, livable community. And uh, it, it's really very successful. So th those are the examples uh, using the uh, designation of safe community as the basis and then develop into even better community in, in some different way. So um, th this uh, designation is so important, not only for their further development, but also for their visibility. And even during the uh, COVID-19, uh, almost every year, there are 80 to 100 uh, groups from uh, domestic or inter or other countries and can come to Jinghua and to pay a visit and uh, have some experience exchange every year. So uh, that's the conclusion of our uh, group uh, discussion. And since we only have one and a half hour, and so uh, still we need, we feel that we need to talk more about uh, these issues, not, not only uh, the assigned items, but also some other issues regarding safe community development. So we decided that in the future, uh, the men in China communities and the Taiwanese communities are going to have more uh, experience exchange in uh, different ways, such as uh, we may uh, have the uh, uh, online meetings, so, or um, once the uh, pandemic is, is over, <laughs> then uh, we can really you know, visit each other in person. Yeah, thank you very much. And that's no small statement, um, given the political statement there. So thank you very much, Lupai. Um, we had a smaller group in the English group, and um, but in many ways, uh, what we were dis we discussed reproduced um, what's already been said. So um, the first discussion is about startup, and uh, our observation was that the startup usually begins around a. Um, charismatic, very inspired person. And when you think about the safe community movement itself, you have to think of Professor Lace Thronstrom as just that person who had that visionary idea that um, managed to gather people around him. And so it is with the startup of a safe community. And sometimes that visionary person is the mayor and it's more top down, um, as was refer referred to. And so that's more typical in. Korea um, it would normally be the visionary mayor that carries it forward, uh, whereas Australia is more like um, Lupai described. It would be a visionary person at the level of the intersectorial group who says, come on, let's all work together, uh, and would the, the energy would develop around the intersectorial group, which would then engage the council. So I think that's an interesting observation, that in terms of start-up, sometimes it's top down and sometimes for some sometimes and for some countries it's top down sometimes and for other countries it's bottom up uh, but maybe it doesn't matter so much uh, how it starts up 
uh, but, and that depends on local politics. Then we talked around the issue of, you know, how does this fit in with designation and how community progress as it matures? And I guess we had a much more pessimistic conversation, I must say, about the dangers of that period of post-designation. So designation is really important, but if you look at the pattern in communities, and certainly if you have a look in st some statistics I did of uh, the survivability of safe communities, um, you know, there's a big peak up until about five years when you first get designated, and then at that stage, a lot of communities drop off. Uh, but that pattern, um, we commented, is, tends to be sustained, um, that there is a designation, then there's a period of exhaustion or sort of quiescence of the project, and then it starts to build up again, hopefully a little bit stronger, and then a sort of drop after the period of designation and build up again, so that there's this pattern of build up of activity that sort of culminates in designation, a bit of a drop off, and building up again. And that seems to be the normal, a very normal pattern. And certainly, um, as a certifier, when I look at the statistics from better communities, it's usually the better communities that have more accurate statistics. I'm pretty sure, I usually don't comment about them because it's a bit discouraging, but I can usually see that pattern in the, in the statistics as well. So we had a discussion about how dangerous that period of post-designation is. And the dangers relate to uh, designation is often uh, associated with the electoral cycle. So it's associated with the change of mayor. It's associated, as Yoko alluded to, with change of staff often occur after the designation period so that people are involved leading the community forward to that designation. And then at that time, they get promoted or get another job and new people come in. And so that led us to a conversation about, you know, what are the protective factors for a, a community at this critical time? Um, and a few factors we identified was the building of the capacity of the community to solve its own problems, um, the process of formalisation that both, what I call formalisation or, or um, systems, uh, you know, um, formalising systems, and both Yoko and Lupai talked about that. Um, you know, when, when a safe community starts, maybe the chief of fire department is involved because he is very enthusiastic about the safe community movement. What you want to do is achieve a situation where the chief of fire is involved because his job description says that he should be contributing to the safe community movement. And so you're wanting to build the involvement of the safe community, of community safety into the normal practice of all council, but all the partners in the safety coalition. Um, and documenting the benefits of being involved. So you're trying to maintain some momentum by actually producing evidence that, you know, it's smarter for the mayor and the leaders to be involved than for them not to be involved. And so it's important to document the ben benefits from when the new mayor comes in or the new staff come in and they look at the documentation about the project and they say, hey, this is a good idea, it's working in our community. We, like um, uh, Yoko and Lu Pai said, the, the degree of communi uh, community participation is very important. That uh, bottom-up energy, um, uh, the degree that that's there that makes it uh, hard for a mayor to disengage, if you like, because the community is so committed to it, it's hard for the, the uh, mayor to step away. And also, we observed, um, looking around the world, that the more active, where support centres are more active, they seem to have a protective factor um, against this, this period of um, uh, attrition or th this risk at the time of uh, designation. So the conclusion we took away from that is that, in fact, um, when a community begins, probably the priority is getting the intersectoral sectoral group working properly and consolidated and the benefits of the intersectoral group working properly. And in some ways, if you are going to have a different emphasis 
on, um, in your designation process, then at the first designation, the emphasis should be on those protective factors, community involvement, formalisation, capacity building, documentation of the benefits, that that should be built in to that first designation to try and um, increase the resilience of uh, a community. Uh, then we had the observation that as the community progresses beyond their first designation from uh, to recertification, uh, that's norm normally when the community starts, the community energy trust is built and the community gets much more involved in the project and um, uh, that, that strength of community, bottom-up community um, commitment tends to build after the first uh, certification. I'm really interested in this theme that um, what came out of this discussion as I heard it is that there are both top-down and bottom-up elements. And regardless of who starts where, when they begin, those top-down elements and the bottom-up elements are very important. And the bottom-up element is the degree of community participation and engagement and momentum that the project has with the community. That's the bottom-up element that has a protective force. And then the top-down element is around the governance and the formalisation of the process and the systems that are in place that, that formalise the commitment of the mayor and the government to this process in the long run. Um, so that's our conversation. And similar themes, I want to try something different. And Professor Cho, you might horrify, I might horrify you. I'd actually like to get everybody up now and we're going to do some voting. So I want you all to stand up and come up the front. Please, everybody, everywhere. And we're first going to talk about how important top-down is. So if you believe that good governance and formalising processes is hugely important for the sustainability of a safe community program, I want you to come and vote, stand here. If you believe that it's not so important, in fact, maybe you even believe it's not important at all, I want you to stand here. So I want you to, what I want you all to do as individuals is make a decision about where you stand on how important good governance is to the sustainability. If you don't think it's all, at all important, you can stand here. If you're in the middle, you can stand about here. And if you think it's really important, so important it can't be forgotten, come and stand over in this corner. So could everyone come forward, come forward and stand in here. I want you to make a human line. I'm calling it a human like hurt line, okay? I want you all to, to, to vote about how important you think governance is. So all come down the front. Everyone's vote's important. And uh, Lou Pye and Gulbrand, I'm sure you're, the, the board will be very interested in this vote. So let's just see what our, our communities say. And it is, as I said, everyone's opinion about this is important because we're trying to get a sense of what, as community members, you think really matters. Yeah, okay. So come forward and stand where we can all see you. Come, come right forward to the front. So we want to see you in the, in the camera. Okay. Come down. We'll get some pictures of this human voting line. Okay. All right. Well, what we have here is what I would call a human Likert line to measure the opinion of this conference on the importance of good governance and building formal, formalising governance processes into the Safe Community Program. And I must say, I think the vote on that is pretty overwhelming that everyone here thinks that's really important. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna ask you about the top-down question, okay? So if you think, sorry, I'm gonna ask you about the bottom-up question. If you think community participation is important for the sustainability of a safe community program, 
Actually, I'll get you to, you have to move to do that. So if you think participation is important, you have to, community participation is important, you have to come and stand here. If you think it's not important, you can stay where you are. Okay. I don't know, Gulbrand and Lupai, I think there's a bit of a message here. I think this one's even less subtle. I mean, the first vote was not very subtle at all, um, but I'm certainly hearing a vote now that uh, communication, uh, community participation is very important for uh, determining the sustainability of a program. Thank you for getting up and thank you for voting. We're really interested to hear what you have to say. Thank you for all our participants. So the summary of that session, I think, is very simple. The view of this conference is that both community governance, uh, both good governance and community participation seem to be the key factors for sustainability of, pro of a safe community project. And a, a wise community is going to work on both those things. Thank you. Thank you very much for your very active uh, the participation. We were really, uh, the, we found it very uh, interesting. So thank you very much for the very active uh, the discussion and uh, presentation and also your engagement. So it was very insightful of insight that we were able to hear from our uh, the, 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 our several the panels. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dale Hansen, for moderating the session. And from now on, uh, let's invite our the vice, uh, the head of co uh, organizing committee, Professor Chong Yi Bei, on stage, uh, and then listen to this achievement um, we had so far. So, from the two for the past two days, we had a very active and full of insight uh, the conference. And uh, we are so pleased that we uh, were able to come up, uh, come so far with uh, a lot of experts and citizens, um, the, both on and offline. So let me share with you our achievement. So uh, let me first talk about the, the purpose of having this conference. Uh, the reason that we had is from 1819, um, the first uh, the conference of this, uh, of this kind was held in Sweden. And then uh, at that first conference, uh, we had uh, adopted uh, the the safe community declaration, which says that all community has a right to health and a safe life. And uh, so far, uh, we, uh, the Korea had worked a lot in this regard. And uh, since in this lingering time of COVID-19, uh, in the 18, uh, 2018, uh, we first decided to uh, hold the 10th Asia International S uh, Safe City Conference uh, well, the, in the year 2018, but it was postponed due to COVID-19. And uh, we are able to host the event finally in the this year from yesterday. So we are so glad for that. And then uh, we have uh, quite a lot of the teams uh, involved in the preparation of this conference. And uh, well, not only the main, um, the, the committee, uh, organizing committee, we also had a lot of support from the the community, uh, the civilian communities and NGOs. And so far, we had uh, the 14 uh, the from the 14 countries we had participants for five six five thousand six hundred fifty four persons and uh, well it was uh, we are happy to have uh, organize we are happy to host this event both online and uh, offline and uh, from abroad uh, we uh, just found out that uh, 1871 persons joined us both on and offline and that uh, the companies the, the country is that um, that they are from that really they're from various countries they're from various continents and we as a 
we so far uh, before uh, the hosting this event, we had a total of fifty one of uh, the uh, the the minor uh, the conferences uh, and then and then also the exemplary the cases uh, e sharings. So uh, let me show you one short video clip about what we did for the past two days.
Okay, thank you very much. For the past four years, uh, we uh, we had a long time of preparation, and then I'm so grateful. I'm so pleased that uh, our the four year uh, the pre preparation was came uh, was very successful like this, and a lot of people have uh, have uh, put in uh, their efforts in here. We have uh, the head of the organizing committee and the various uh, stakeholders, and then most of all the civilians, uh, the our uh, civilians, and oh. So and then our uh, the PCOs. So thank you so much for your active uh, participation and hard work. And then also I'd like to uh, the say that uh, thank you so much uh, the, for our the renowned uh, the uh, and I also would like to invite uh, uh, invite uh, Mr. Grooveland um, on stage. He would like to say something to you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I uh, must say thank you to the city Seon and thank you to the chairman, uh, Jung Pil Shao. It has been a very successful conference and uh, I appreciate it very much. The topic community participation in safe community sustainability is very important. Um, I this is the 25th conference and I participated in the first world conference held in Stockholm 1989 and uh, participated as a member of the planning committee at that time and I also participated in uh, as author um, uh, together with some others uh, of the Stockholm manifesto. I can also my greetings from Leif uh, Swanström, Professor Leif Swanström. I met him yesterday and informed him about the conference. Uh, I am not as many old men. I am not say that it was much better before. Now always go in the wrong direction. I say the opposite. I am very happy for all that happened since 1989. The top-down system we discussed even at that time, uh, I think that we have, and Seyong has shown us that it's a good co combination of top-down and bottom-up, as also Lupai uh, informed us yesterday. It's not opposite, it's to combine, to have a good combination. And in this combination, we have the real democratic dimension, as I understand it. And as first time I understood when I was in Seong for the uh, as a certifier. We have also uh, the development of subsidiarity in the world that is very, very important that the decisions shall come closer to the citizens and not high up in the hierarchy. And citizens are not objects for intervention. Citizens are active participations. It's very important. For Seong, to Seong, I will say that before 1989, Europe and Stockholm was the center for safe community. Then during the time it has shifted all over the world and we have had it in different places. But since some time, some years, it has definitely been in Asia and now the latest year in Seoul. So the center has moved around all over the world. What I especially appreciate uh, with Seong now and when I was certified is that you have in the urban planning give so much priority to public transportation. You have developed public hearings very good with this uh, good uh, part of the top-down system. And you have also developed and are developing advanced safety culture. So there it's very important. 
Yeah, and so another thing, Su sustainability needs also continuity. And in the state community movement, designation and certification is very, very important. Now we have, during the conference, decided to accredit five more certifiers. And the certifiers are very important for our system in that way. This certifier, if uh, I can ask Professor Nam Su Park and Professor Kyung Pek to uh, enter the, the scene. This, they are two of the new certifiers. And there are also Professor Reza Mohammadi, who most of us, uh, of you know, Mohammad, uh, he comes from Stockholm, and of Professor in, in Karolinska. We are Dr. S um, Mohammad Sadati from Tabriz in Iran. We have Sonny Lee from Taiwan. These five persons are now uh, designated. Uh, 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 they are now certifiers, accredited certifiers. So a big applause to they who are on the scene and on applause to it on distance to the other. So thank you very, very much for the conference. Please give him a big round of warm applause. And to put themselves forward, they're normally standing in the background doing wonderful work um, yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, two men, uh, Pang Namsung Gosu, our Pekyong was in the So we are so pleased that uh, we have uh, the new certifying uh, the, uh, the experts to experts in this venue. So uh, congratulations to professors. Congratulations uh, for your new role that you, you will be playing. So thank you very much. So uh, once again, uh, the Professor Bay and uh, and also the Director General, the equivalent for your uh, the insightful remark. So for the past two days, uh, we uh, for the we just uh, had seen the, the video clip highlight the video clips and uh, we were able to see that how many people had participated uh, in this uh, great forum and uh, we believe that uh, in our years ahead uh, we can uh, work together to make our cities more uh, the more more the safer now let's invite our uh, the vice mayor Kidong Cho of Sejong City Government for a closing remark. So this will be a very last session. Good after good afternoon everyone. I am Vice Mayor Ko Gidong of Sejong City Government. I am here on behalf of our mayor, Min Ho Choi. First of all, it is a true uh the pleasure uh, and uh, being able to uh, complete the 25th International and the 10th Asia Safe Community Conference amid the lingering COVID-19. We are able to come so far because of your love and active support. Uh, we are pleased to share with you that 19 local communities in Korea uh, have adopted joint declaration on commitment of on sustainable international safe communities. For the past two days, we had a rigorous uh, discussions on safety, uh, which includes many presentations and panel discussions, and each of them was full of cases and examples. And uh, there is nothing on earth more important than safety. Uh, the Sejong City uh, safety and Sejong City has uh, decompiled various experiences and exemplary cases on the Save the City projects for the past ten years, and we will uh, continue to commit ourselves to promote further uh, to promote further the values of Safe City um, and uh, to more communities and as. Uh, 
uh, and the citizens and enhance our policies in this regard. Uh, by doing so, we will continue to strive to become a city safe and happy uh, to all our citizens. Uh, thank you once again for your presence and active participation, and I wish you a healthy and a happy life. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, uh, our Kidong Choi, for your uh, the closing remarks, and for our uh, the distinguished guests and especially our VIPs. Please, would you please come up to the podium so to have the final uh, degree photo, and so. Uh, so everyone, uh, especially our VIPs, would you please come forward uh, so that we can take a group photo. So please. And uh, let's have a group photo. And let's take a group photo. So, would you please stand in the middle? Shall we uh, take off our mask or put it on? Okay, let's take it off. So, let's take off our mask and then please um, deface the camera. So, um, let's first a photo with full of your fighting spirit. Ready? Fighting. Okay, let's give them a big round of applause. And we have the citizens and the volunteer workers. So shall we have a great photo all together? So all, all those uh, citizens and volunteer workers who participated uh, the, for this uh, two-day event, I think you are the main players. You are the the main uh, the persons for this two-day event. So please come up to the podium so that we can take a great photo. Everyone, please all come up to the stage. So everyone, please, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, so everyone, please come up to the stage. So let's take a photo together. So uh, would you, uh, for those in the front row, would you please uh, stand in the middle? Are you ready with the uh, fighting spirit? One, two, three, fighting. Thank you very much. So with this, let's conclude uh, the, um, the all the sessions of the Safe Community Conference in Sejo. So it was such a meaningful time that we were able to share uh, the insightful, the comments, and then uh, a lot of active discussions. And uh, we hope that uh, you are, we, we ask for your active on uh, the participation and engagement for the days to come. So uh, I hope you have a happy uh, days and uh, please uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.